Hello everyone, this is Caitlin and today we are making an 1870s working class dress. Alright, let's get started. I am using the, dre the Domestic Ladies Dressmakers uh, Lily pattern, which is 1870-1876. Put together all the pattern pieces because it was um, a printable pattern and I am ready to go. I'm using this pink fabric today with this pretty little design on it. A bit small for 1860s, but I found never that support in the 1870s, so small stuff it is. As the original dress, this one was um, patterned off of, had a very small print like this. I actually found a very similar, almost identical fabric to the original. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't have the yardage I needed, so settled for this. So let's go ahead and cut it out. And of course lining as well. I'm using whatever was in the stash, which is just brown cotton. Alright, let's get sewing. So I have here the back which I stitched together and we're going to go ahead and put the fashion fabric back on it. And we're stitching this whole thing on the antique sewing machine. Because why not? somewhat determined to have this entire outfit from underpinnings on a sewn by that machine. Alright, we're going to put some darts in while I talk because a couple things happened. Not terrible things, but um, things. So first of all, <laughs> I learned, um, well let's start with this. So I realized that I did the back wrong because I made it to where this part, the seam, was on the out, well, on the inside of the bodice. So where the raw edge was hidden, which I don't know why I did that, because I know it doesn't matter. I know that they would have done it the other way, but I don't feel, I don't care enough to take it out. So it's going to stay like that. Um, I did have to take in, oh gosh, about four inches at the waist and the back, but I think that was mostly just me because I had to cut a larger size for the bust than I did it for the waist, which I knew. Um, I tried cutting down the waist on the pattern piece, but I probably just didn't cut it down far enough. So yeah, I had to take in quite a bit. Uh, I did learn that darts in the 1870s are different than darts in the 1860s because I tried it on with my corset and everything. I was like, oh, I'm just going to try it on, um, put my own darts in there because, you know, they need to be fitted to me and I know how darts look good on me. So I tried doing 1860s darts, which are of course like slanted. And it was not looking good. I could not get it to look right. It was bunching very oddly. It just looked strange. And I could not figure out why it was doing that. So finally I got fed up. I took it off. And I decided to mark the pattern darts on there. Just, you know, to give myself a starting point. The pattern darts are straight up and down. And I was like, okay, maybe that has something to do with it. They fit perfectly, just right on. So, uh... It was the shaping that I was dealing with. I just didn't know any better. But like a lot of commercial patterns have the straight up and down darts, even though originals show this like slanted darts. So I wasn't really, I guess I kind of assumed, oh, this is what works on my body is the slanted ones. And clearly that's not the problem. It's a time period thing. So I am just putting the darks in as marked on the pattern piece. I also marked where I'm going to have to um, do all my gathering because it's gathered, the fashion fabric in front is gathered as is the back is gathered a little bit as well. So I am going to need to mark that as well. I have it marked. I just got to do the gathering threads. But that's about where I am right now. Um, it's now nice and fitted in the back. It works, um, which is a good thing. And everywhere else seemed to fit just fine. It was a little bit big in the back neck, but I took up the whole back piece, just like a scant quarter of an inch. So it still should fit fine. I should be able to move that curve on the fashion fabric to be, you know, fitted. It'll work. It's just um, a little bit too big there for me. But all bodies are different, so it's not very surprising that I'd have to make changes. All right, we've moved places for a little bit because I didn't feel like getting up to do this, so. We're going to sew from the coffee table for a while. 
but I have the bodice here and I am just going to be doing little hand gathers at the front and the back to kind of get it to fit where we put the darts. Distribute the gathers so I have pins in my mouth. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make some piping for the waistband and go ahead and pipe the arm side as well. I just need to make piping. So I have lots of bias. I just need to make piping. But while we're here, let's go ahead and sew together this pocket. Why not? I like how big it is too. That is very nice. And here we are putting piping to a bodice. This is the collar, which apparently in this time period is of silk fabric. Not used to that. So this is this little bias. So it's the, the fabric, the collar, and then bias. And the bias is going to get turned under to cover the raw edge. Like we do with piping. Alright, sleeve. So I have the ruffle here. And I did a little gathering thread. And so I am just going to pull this wherever it went to. I gather it up and I'm kind of matching the hem of the ruffle to the hem of the sleeve. That seemed logical to me. And all the sleeves trimmed getting put on by hand. Okay. And then I've been taking the gathering thread and kind of just tacking the ruffle down. Not very nice stitches, just tacking stitches. And now we have the bias trim to put on. So I'm finding the bottom of the sleeve. There it is. And I've been covering the threads here with just the edge of the bias. Put it over a little bit more. Painting it. And just keep going. Sewing in the sleeve, which I'm doing with just a, well, fairly large back stitch. It's a lot of layers, it's hard to do tiny ones. And this holds it in pretty well. It makes it, and doing it by hand makes this arm side more flexible than doing it by machine, I find. And even some of my machine sewn gowns have their sleeves sewn in by hand. Which leads me to believe that the Victorians also thought that this was better. Now we're on to the skirt. So I'm stitching some skirt panels together. Interestingly enough, I was looking through the directions for the pattern, which I don't do because I don't understand directions. But I was looking at the collar because the collar looks far too big. And looking at the original, that yes, it is far too big, like twice as big as it should be. So I'm going to go back and redo that collar in a little bit. But while I was looking at the pictures of the original, um, Marna just kind of casually mentions in the pattern that the dress is sewn primarily with a chain stitch machine, which is kind of fun because that's what we're doing right now is sewing it with a chain stitch machine. So that's kind of a little cool little detail I didn't know before, wasn't planning on it, like that wasn't in my intention to sew this in, on a chain stitch machine because it was chain stitch machine, because it was originally sewn on a chain stitch machine. I just wanted to use the antique machine. so. Cool little detail, but I'm going to be here for a while sewing skirt panels together and then putting in pockets and doing all the fun trimmy bits. We're going to gauge this thing later and I still have to do buttons and buttonholes. I've been avoiding that, so, and now we do the collar, so. Fun part is that I was hoping to wear this dress tomorrow, so it's like we're like halfway through the day already and <laughs> I'm still working on this thing. And I was hoping to get a bonnet done too. That's probably not going to happen. We'll figure something out. I, I surely, surely I have something. But yes, I'm going to continue sewing all this together. And I'll see you once I start putting in a pocket. So my pockets in differently than I think the directions showed, but I don't follow written directions well. I think I've said, I think I've stated that before. So. That wasn't going to happen. 
I just did what I know I can do. You get the same end result anyway. Now it's the hemline, so we're putting on a facing. But we're heading down the home stretch. So after this, it's basting the facing in on top and then putting the trim on the skirt and then sewing the skirt to the bodice. And then of course I still have the buttonholes to do on the bodice and I had to fix that collar, so. Yep, we're winding down though. All right, skirt trim, sewing it on. I believe the directions might say top stitching. I'm doing what I did with the sleeve to make it consistent, which is kind of like whip stitch. Getting almost done, putting in the gauging on the skirt. Then I have one more button to put in. Alright, so here's the buttons I've been using, these beautiful little green glass buttons. Uh, the originals were uh, glass, so I figured might as well continue with the glass theme. I didn't have a lot of options with glass buttons. This green, I had some blue ones I really considered, but ended up going with the green. They're a little bright for my taste, I think, but they're pretty. So I will get this tied off and then I will, well not tonight, go put it on, but next time you'll see me, next time you see me, it'll be with the dress on. And here it is. Um, so yes, so I wore this all day today. Um, it's like six o'clock, 5.30, something like that. And so I've been out, I've been dressed in this since like eight o'clock this morning. So, so yeah, you get to see me after a whole day of being outdoors, no AC, um, in July in Texas, dressed in the 1870s. So yes, my hair is not as perfect as it could be because it's been a very full long day. But yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, dress turned out so well, so well. Um, sleeves are a bit long. I might shorten them an inch next time, but really they're not bad. I spent most of the day with them like curled up to my elbow because it was warm. It actually wasn't miserable, it was just warm. And you're hearing puppy dogs because I just got home. And somebody just wants some attention. Yes. Well, I guess I didn't do too much this morning. I mostly sat around and sewed this morning. Then we walked for a while um, in the heat. And went back in and cleaned the kitchen. So, uh, somewhat hard labor. At least in the afternoon. It was warm. I mean, it is July and this is Texas, so yes, it was warm. I wasn't unbearably hot, um, particularly when I took my handkerchief, doused it in water, and just wrapped it around my neck. I'm kind of thankful for the wider neckline because it fit the handkerchief really well in there. And then it got my collar all nice and soaked, and then I would take the handkerchief off and the breeze would hit the collar. It was wonderful. It was just wonderful, okay? So yes, this is what it looks like. Um, I am quite pleased with it. It is... Um, very nice dress. I could comfortably move in it. I think next week I'm going to mostly do cooking instead of sewing. And so I think that's just what I decided I'm going to do uh, while I'm there. I love sewing when I'm at home. When I'm out places, I generally don't do a lot of sewing. I get very lazy. I don't like just to sit there and sew when I'm at an event. I prefer to like sit, I prefer to get up and do stuff. And so I think cooking can be the better option for me there. Um, as opposed to actually trying to get projects done. So, you know, that and it's hard to bring the camera out there when I have visitors and all that. So it's just easier to not do any sewing while I'm there. So, yeah, but this is it. Um, it is pinned together the waist right now because you are supposed to put a hook and eye there. And I did not think about that at one o'clock in the morning when I finished this dress. I was not processing that. So I had to pin it together this morning, but there will be a hook and eye that gets there eventually. Other than that, it works really well. Here's the back of it. Sleeves are maybe an inch too long, but I have short arms, so that was not surprising whatsoever. I just didn't think about it beforehand. But yeah. And I'm wearing the bustle we made. So I'm wearing everything that, well, we made everything except for the petticoat. So we made the uh, combination underwear, we made the corset, we made the bustle and the underskirt, and the dress. So yeah, all my accessories are from Beth Miller Hall, from even a little um, hair comb too which fits really well in my 1880s hair, which this is the 
Uh, second time I've done 1880s hair, or 1870s hair, sorry. So, this is actually 1870s and 1880s. I found evidence for it both decades, so... Yeah, uh, this is the first, second time I've done it. I think it turned out okay. Um, now granted, I have been sweating most of the day, so yes, it doesn't look fantastic right now. Um, you get me at the very end of the day, but um, it held up, so that's a good thing. Dress is fine. I do need to go find my aprons if I'm going to be doing a lot of cooking. I have misplaced them. I tried looking for them last night. I couldn't find them, so I'll go look for those. In the meantime, very happy with this gown. I will be making another one when I but I need another gown. I'm not to that point yet. Hey. Okay. Oh, you want you to see the neighbor? Okay. I thought he was going to come say hi to me. Apparently not. But yes, uh, maybe with the next one, I may not do the ruffles per se. Um, just right here. Just kind of make it a little bit more work appropriate. But these worked out just fine, and I actually folded them up most of the day, and they worked really well folded up. I could just keep folding and folding and folding. I got them to my elbow, and that's basically where I kept them, here or elbow, for most of the day, especially when it got a little warm, and we were doing like all that cleaning out the kitchen and all that sort of thing. So that worked out really well. But yeah, that's that's this dress. Um, worked really well. My first time doing the 1870s, I think it's a, a good start. Uh, maybe a few bodice improvements I might make. The mock-up fit fine. Uh, I think the collar's a little, a little, you know, more open than it should be, but uh, not by much. So I can easily fix that. Other than that, it worked really well, and I am quite pleased with it. So uh, it held up really well. Uh, it was a really fun project. I am glad we got it done. Um, completely sewn on the original sewing machine, which was amazing. So glad I got to be able to do that. But thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And I will see you next Monday.